Here it is. Oh, yeah. I think it's one of the last ones. I mean, when we have when we when we have the opportunity to look at the really beautiful, formally written mathematical proof with all details. Uh, maybe not. Well, doesn't matter. Uh, right. Forward one. Forward one. Forward one is easy. Relatively easy. So we're just assuming this. And we would like to conclude this for every possible converging sequence. Well, that's a very good piece of the epsilon delta type argument. So I fix a positive epsilon. Given that we're assuming this is true, I can now just do the expansion using the definition of the limit. What does it say? It, say, it says this. Limit of f of x equal b by definition implies that there is delta, positive delta, such that every x within the delta distance of a point, every x within the delta distance of a point implies that f of x point will be within the epsilon distance of a b point. It's just a legit, uh, it's just expansion of the definition of the limit. Now, I fix a sequence, xn, like this. So I fix a sequence which converging to A. And now I do the expansion for this limit, for the definition of this limit. That's my expansion. What does it say? It, say, well, this, it says for every possible epsilon there is something. But on this occasion, I'll choose, I choose a particular epsilon. And I added the index 1 to distinguish it from this epsilon. So for one choice of epsilon, 1, which I choose to be delta, for this choice of epsilon, definition of this limit tells me that there is an index n such that past that index, such that past that index, I have this distance of xn sequence from the a point less than my uh, epsilon 1 chosen to be delta. Again, this 1, I just in indexed my epsilon with 1 to distinguish it from this epsilon for which we chose delta. And now we just say that for, that is for this positive epsilon, look at this. What I'm saying is this now. For this positive epsilon, I can say there is an index, this index, which we built in two-stage process. First, we build delta, and then we build n, basing on that delta, such that for every n after that delta, after that index, this is true. And by implication, this is true as well as from here. Right? If you take xn, which is close to a by the distance delta, then f of xn, f of xn will be to b, close to b by the distance delta. By, by, sorry, by the distance epsilon. And here's another epsilon delta version of a definition for the limit, but now different sequence. Sequence f, f of xn. Look at this. For positive epsilon, I presented the place after which my sequence, my new sequence, f of xn, close to b by epsilon or less. That is the definition of the limit of my new sequence. And that's a forward proof. Look at this. I, I chose any possible sequence with this condition. And I concluded that for, that for this sequence, newly built sequence, f of xn, satisfies this condition. That's the end of the forward proof. Let me just look at the opposite one. This one more challenging. The opposite one, I will do this by contradiction. So I will. So now we assume uh, we need to prove that if we have this statement, then this one is also true. By contradiction, I'll do it like that. I'll. What do I do by contradiction? <laughs> Too many lectures this year.
yeah, we, we will assume that uh, this is true, but this one is not true. So we will assume that limit of f of x is not equal b, according to the definition of the limit. And yet we have this statement that for every converging sequence to a, f of that sequence converging to b. That's my assumptions. So we assume that, do I have it here? I'll bring it up a little bit. We assume that limit of f of x not equal b, but at the same time, limit of xn equal b for every sequence converging to a. That's the, that's the setup of the proof by contradiction. And I, will come, I, I want to come up with something wrong. Some, something, I, I want to come up with a contradiction in this setup. Look at this, what I'm going to say. I'm going to interpret what happens when limit not equal b. When limit equal b, it sounds like this. For every epsilon, there is delta such that as long as distance to a is less than delta, distance to b is less than epsilon. Opposite of that, logical negation of this statement will sound like this. There is a positive epsilon, which I will call epsilon naught. Oh, I opened the wrong. How come? There's a positive epsilon such that for every positive delta, there is always an element which on one hand close to A, closer to A than delta, but on the other hand, far away from B, at least at the distance epsilon. This is the negative of the definition of the limit. And I'm going, I'm going to use this to come up with a contradiction. Look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose a particular, because it works for any delta. I mean, this nicely, or well, this is this good or bad epsilon naught, it works with every delta. So I make a choice for delta, like this, 1 on n. Yes, never mind this. Uh, it will come up eventually. Let me just close this. Yeah, as if it's not there. I'm going to choose a particular delta, like this. For this delta, this line claims that there is an element, which this time I will denote with the index n, because for different deltas, different element. That's why I reflect this dependence, x sub n, such that, on one hand, this is true. That's exactly this statement. On the other hand, this is true. And we're almost there. We're almost at the contradiction. Look at this, because... I can say now, on one hand, this constructed sequence is such that, well, the distance doesn't exceed n. On the other hand, it's non-negative. So it's a by sandwich principle. I can say that the limit of these numbers is 0, which is, by equivalence theorem, limit of xn equal a. It's on one, on one side. On the other side, I can say that because this distance is bigger than epsilon naught, the limit of the f sequence is not equal b. Because for limit to be b, this must also go to 0, and it doesn't because of this epsilon. 